Welcome to the Positive Impact Podcast, where we dive into the world of movers, shakers, and change makers, creating a positive impact on the world. This is your host, Alexandra Black Pollock, and together we're going to tackle real issues, discovering how we can make the world a better place. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Tired of the grocery store? Looking to spice up dinners? HelloFresh delivers delicious ingredients and easy recipes straight to your door. Take $40 off your first box at positiveimpactpodcast.com slash fresh. You'll be enjoying cooking again in no time. I am beyond excited to be sitting in Nashville with another inspiring mover and shaker, Christy Wright, who is empowering women all over the country to become champions of business and chart their own versions of professional lives. Six years ago, she joined the Dave Ramsey team and has been taking this message to thousands upon thousands of individuals all over the U.S., not to mention the 1,200 fabulous lady and a few men here at Business Boutique today where we are. In fact, she is so fired up about this mission that she was dancing on stage in heels to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off earlier today. Christy, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I love being here with these women, and I'm excited to get to hang out with you for a little bit. <sighs> Obviously, you're killing it. This event is phenomenal. Your team did a great job, and I know you were spearheading that. Thank you very much. But before we dive into this message, and I know it's such an essential message, I would love to hear a little bit about your entrepreneurial background and some of the pursuits that you've done before your time with the Dave Ramsey team. Sure, definitely. Well, it's cool to see how I feel like that at different stages of my life, there have been chapters and stages and stories that all seem segmented at the time, and they didn't seem like they really had a purpose. And now, as I'm stepping into this new area of my life where God is calling me to, it almost feels like kind of pulling the strings of those separate pieces together. And so um, from the beginning, I was born to two entrepreneurs and my mom actually started a cake shop to raise and support me and it was her cake business and, and being raised by her that gave me that desire to equip women in business specifically and so that was kind of the background of my childhood and then I have a degree in business and then started my own side business when I was 22 out of college just to help honestly pay my rent because I couldn't afford it uh, with an entry-level salary and then I uh, became a certified life and business coach and and so all of these different things kind of have been snowballing and snowballing. And now we see stepping into this new chapter with the business boutique, how all of those things are playing into the importance of not only what I'm doing for these women, but um, that I am one of these women. And I'm am, I am walking this faith walk with them of stepping into my calling as I'm asking them to step into their calling. And it's really compelling, and all the women here are so fired up and driven by that. Mission. I feel it. It's awesome. I feel it on stage. Like, the energy's crazy. The energy has been incredible. It's just been alive here. But going back to those times when you were 22, what was that side business that you championed? So it's not a conventional 22-year-old story, and I'll be talking about this later today, but I talk about this in my Life Balance talk, where um, when I graduated college, I decided to move to a 40-acre farm, and I had always grown up with horses like whenever I was little and had a dream to live on a farm again someday. And so this farm came for rent. And uh, whenever I moved there, I couldn't afford rent on the farm. It was very expensive. So there was an 11 stall barn. And I thought, you know what, I can turn this into money. And so I'm going to board horses and help pay my rent. So I did that. I know it's not your conventional side business for a 22 year old girl that's single by herself. <laughs> but incredible though. And talk about the opportunity and just capitalizing on that to take it into board. Well, I think it's interesting because people have an idea to uh, to do something on the side or they want to make some extra money. You know, they're like, I'd love to help pay off my debt quicker. I'd love to help send my kids to, you know, soccer camp or whatever. We don't have the money. And so they're not sure where to get started. And the idea of starting a business seems so overwhelming. But one of the things that I encourage people to do is to really think about what do you have at your home? What do you have around you already? What skills or abilities or what actual items? So when I pulled up to that farm, there was an old house on the property, but there was also an 11 stall barn. And at the time I didn't have any animals, but even if I, when I got a horse, I wasn't going to get 11 horses, right? So I was going to have all these available stalls. And I thought that is something I can monetize. So I just encourage people to look around them. You may have something already in your home. Maybe it's a sewing machine or a computer with a graphic design program, something that you can turn into income. And it's just sitting there idle right now, but you could actually make money doing that thing and have that extra money to work towards your goals. Oh, I love that. Just so empowering. And luckily for you, you also had a background with horses because Personally, I wouldn't have been able to right, yeah. start that just because I don't know about, enough about them. Um, so 
taking that message to all these women here, uh, earlier we talked to Stephanie Burns of Chic CEO in episode two, and she talked about challenges that women face in businesses. What have you found some of those challenges to be? Yeah, it's interesting. I've done research for a couple of years now on women with side businesses specifically. And in all of my research, I've done um, one-on-one interviews that are about an hour long, taking pages and pages and pages of notes. I've done a surveys that over um, like almost 20,000 people have taken between all of our surveys. Um, and then I've done focus groups and I've actually facilitated questions where women interacted. And in every scenario, it just affirmed the five main pain points that women have. And these are the five pain points that we've identified, which we built this whole event around these five points, by the way. So um, one of them is just where to get started. Like I want to do something, but I don't know how. So having a plan is by far the number one most common problem we have. Uh, The second one is money. Women really struggle with charging and pricing and earning a profit and paying themselves. And it's it's this constant tension. It's this love-hate relationship with money. Uh, So money is the second one. Uh, Uh, The third one would be marketing and selling. How do I put myself out there? How do I get new clients? How do I approach people without being pushy? You know, all of these beliefs we have around marketing and selling. And so that's definitely one. Um, The legal side of things, the complicated stuff, the taxes, the business insurance, patents and copyrights and trademarks. That's tough. Like we're, it seems so overwhelming. So since we can't figure that out, we just think, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't do the thing. And uh, so that's really a pain point. And the fifth one is time management and this idea of life balance. And we're a mom, but we've got these dreams, but maybe we also have a full-time job and we want to serve our community and be a wife and all of these roles and how do we balance it all while tr- still trying to step into our God-given gifts and pursue our passions. So we're going to, that's actually where we're closing today is with life balance and time management because that's a big struggle as well. And definitely in this event, you guys have touched on each one of those. And I personally, number four, that legal stuff, way over my head, uh, trademarks, all that. But if you could touch quickly on, let's start with number one. What is your best advice for women that are starting out and don't know where to start? So I actually have a resource on my website, and it's called the Business Boutique Quick Start Guide. And it has it's a basic baby business plan. And so that will get you started. That would be a great resource for you. But if you just basically start with the end in mind, you think through what am I trying to achieve? What are some goals? Uh, what is my business going to be? And, and just have a little bit of strategy because some people get so excited about their idea. They run out and set up a Facebook page and they didn't do the work to actually think through how is this business going to operate? Where? How much am I going to charge? Like, thinking through some of that stuff and you can create your own plan or we have that. You can Google it. You can find tons of business plans. Or um, I have the basic quick start one on my website as well. And research is so essential. Understanding the market, the trends, the viability of a product in that area. Because it's not always just about how you have a great product. Right. It's about the need for that. Right, absolutely. Do you have any tips for researching or how to go about that? Yeah, I, honestly, just talking to people. Like, people love to talk about themselves. Like, they really do. So if you just ask people questions like, oh, you want to hear my opinion? Let me tell you. So if you just talk to people and if there's a specific uh, market you're going after, so I was going after women with side businesses, I just started seeking them out and asking them questions and they just gush and they would tell me all of their hopes and fears and dreams and aspirations and problems and and that's how I got to know my market. So really understanding uh, what they want, what they need and being strategic in your questioning too. Don't just ask them like, tell me about what you're going through, think through what information is going to help you build your business. So I asked them, uh, how do you define success? I asked the women this again and again, and I, I even led them uh, and gave them examples, which you're not really supposed to do in research, but I did this on purpose. And I said, is it dollars? Is it uh, customers served? Is it units sold? And every one of them paused and said, it's the joy I receive. It's the joy I receive from my business. So that's brilliant to me to understand that because when I'm creating marketing language for women inside businesses, I'm not going to go say, sell more units, sell more units, sell more units. That's not how they define success. They're not going to come to my event to learn how to sell more units. I say, learn how to make money doing what you love. They show up for that because I'm speaking their language. And by the way, while you're here, we're going to show you how to sell more units. You just hit the nail on the head. Research is so essential. And also the way that you framed it in going out and building that relationship. In some of the sessions today, it has talked about the importance of having a business that's built on relationships. So how do you kind of leverage some of those initial relationships to kind of fuel and start driving business and get that momentum out of the gate? So I wrote a blog recently called uh, The Four Types of Friends That You Need for Your Business, and I'll try to remember them all here on the spot. Um, But these are more relationships you need to have that will then drive 
uh, the customer base you're talking about. So um, when you're getting started out or really any time in business, uh, one type of friend you need is the connected friend. And this is the friend that knows someone who knows someone who knows someone. And they will start to uh, pull people together and network to move you in line with your goals. Oh, well, I have someone that's a graphic designer. They can help you with your website. Well, I have someone who has a contact at this company that can help you know print your business cards for cheap or whatever. And so your connected friend is going to be critical to your success. This is part of your network that helps you get going. Um, and then you also want to have the cautious friend. And the cautious friend is someone who's going to poke holes in your idea. And I know those holes are painful holes. It hurts every time my husband does this to me. But they help your idea become more stable. And they make sure that it's actually going to last the long term. They think of what could go wrong. So I know you're in love with this idea, but you're too close to it. You need someone from the outside that's cautious to help you think through what could go wrong so you avoid some of those uh, mistakes. You also need the cheerleader friend. And this is someone that just encourages you and encourages you. You can do it. You can do it. You've got this. You know, and that is so important too because in business, it feels so vulnerable. Like it feels so vulnerable in business. And so really just having this team of people around you is going to be so critical to your success because you've got these different types of personalities that bring different streaks to your, your, your dream team, if that makes sense. The fourth one that you would want to have is your creative friend. And having a creative friend, if you're not naturally creative, is so critical to every aspect of your business because they're going to help you find ways to build your business with lower costs. They think outside the box. When it comes to marketing, they help you set yourself apart and be different than all the clutter. This is me. In, in most uh, coaching relationships, I'm the creative person. I have 100 ideas a minute, no shortage of ideas. And the more ideas that I that I give away, the more that I have. And, you know, it's this endless well. And so a lot of times we think of creative creativity is something that dries up but the more creativity you use the more you have it's like a muscle and so having a creative friend speak into your business will really help you set yourself apart as well as overcome obstacles because you're thinking outside the box I believe one of the other ones and the reason why I remember it is because my husband falls in that is how you're going to get there uh-huh <laughs> and you talked about how your husband pokes holes in things mm -hmm. mine is always well how you're going to get there mm -hmm. he's also a constructional engineer so he just wants to build that yeah. path yeah uh, but next, I really want to tackle the number two of those challenges that women face, and that was money. And I know that that is a hard conversation. So what is your advice to women when tackling those, how much do I charge? How do I even ask for money? How do I close the sale? What is your advice for them? Well, I think for, for many of us, if we understand that our relationship with money, our beliefs about money, pricing, profit, if all of that is a struggle for us, we definitely can learn to try to make that weakness stronger. But I think one of the best things you can do is put people around you that are strong in that area. And that would be true for any aspect of business. So if you're not good at marketing, have someone around you that's good at marketing and a natural marketer. If you're not good at people and having building relationships, put someone around you that's going to help you build those relationships. And the same is true for money. Um, as, as much as this may offend some people, but I'm just going to call it like it is, uh, for women, it can be helpful to go to a man. A man is much more objective about business. It's not as subjective and personal in many cases and they're much more willing to charge more. And so where I would put a price on something, my husband would always put a much higher price on that. And so it can, there can be wisdom in that. And if you have a spouse or if you have a friend or someone in the community and you show them your product or service and say, what do you think this is work, worth? What do you, here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? A lot of times it will be higher than what you're thinking because we always undervalue ourselves, especially if you're in a creative industry. If you're a naturally gifted artist, then when you paint something, it's effortless for you. It's an outlet for you. You do it anyway. So it doesn't seem so, so valuable. You feel weird putting a high price on it because to you it's something you do even if you weren't getting paid. Um, and so, for, or if you give out information, if you're a financial coach, for example, uh, leading up to this event, I continually had this doubt in the back of my mind that what I was teaching was not the right stuff. Now, I knew intellectually that it was because I did my research, but in the back of my mind, I'm going, this is so common sense to me because I'm in my gift. Uh, okay, uh, everything I've taught is second nature to me, so I undervalue it. I think, oh, well, it's there's no reason to even like you know tell people to come because th everybody knows this. Everyone doesn't know this, and that's the value that I'm adding to what we're doing. But the same is true for you. The same is true for your listeners. What is common sense to you is not common to everyone, but we undervalue it because it's, it just seems so obvious to us. But just remembering other people don't know this, other people don't have this skill. And so you're bringing value and you should be able to charge accordingly. It's so important to remember the value that we offer to the table and to, you know, we put in years and we undervalue the time and the expertise that we have to bring to that table. You know, I've been in marketing for several years now and I, I'm totally guilty as well. 
I look at what I, you know, marketing in general, and of course you have to have native language. Of course mm -hmm. you have to have all these different outlets. Of course you have to do your research. But other people from that industry, it's not the way they speak. And so to just value and understand what you bring to the table is so essential. So moving on to marketing. Sure. <laughs> what, and I think we've talked a touch on it, so we're probably not going to linger here too long. But what is that advice for marketing? What is that jump start that I don't know anything about marketing? I would say I'll narrow it down to two things as a starting point. Um, one, have focus. And we've talked about this all weekend. I know the ladies are tired of hearing me say have focus. But so many people try to be so many different things, and they try to, to – do the shotgun approach of being everything to everyone and they speak to no one instead be one thing have have focus in your business and then have focus in your marketing so if you come to my website you will only find articles on life balance leadership side business everything in this arena of like things together you're not going to come and find five ways to improve your garden and get weeds out right like I'm known for one thing so have focus so people know what to expect from you because you teach others what to expect from you and so if you're all over the board they don't know what box to put you in they don't know what to go to you for so they don't come back because they go there and they get confused. It's like the bargain bin where you're just digging around and, and you're just mad. You just leave and you didn't get anything, right? And so having focus will really help you. Uh, the second thing is, and we talked about this with research, but know who your target market is. And again, it's not a shotgun approach. It's one type of person. Take time to figure out who can benefit from what you have to offer, product or service, and who is willing to pay the, pay the price that you're charging. Um, and once you identify who that person is, you can start marketing specifically to that person using their language. I'll give you an example with the business boutique. We identified that many of these women do not identify with words like investor, entrepreneur, startup. They identify with words like hobby, home-based business. I'm doing this because I love it. I'm doing it because it brings me joy. And so when we start speaking their language, then we're able to bring them in and they go, oh, that's me. They get me. This is for me. Um, and so just simply understanding who your target market is helps you write your language for them because otherwise we're using language that's not for them. And I'll tell you, from my experience, our company is led by Dave Ramsey. And it very much reflects Dave Ramsey's personality. Entree Leadership is the business brand in our organization, and everything looks and feels like Dave Ramsey. And so when we started brainstorming this, Dave's like, oh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna reach those women entrepreneurs, and we're going to have Sarah Blakely and all this. And I'm, I'm going, you know what? They don't identify with the word entrepreneur, and I don't even know that Sarah Blakely would be this shining inspiration for them. She's beautiful and successful and incredible, but many of them don't want to achieve that level of success. So if you hold her up and say, we're going to show you how to be this, they're going, well, that's not me. I just want to be able to pay for my kid to go to soccer camp. So it actually has the opposite effect when you don't use the right language. So understand who your market is, and then you can start to speak their language in order to reach them and bring them into your tribe. It's also so empowering that when you go to make decisions for the event, really understanding that avatar. I know I did extensive research on my avatar. And Sasha Dingle, I have told you that you are my avatar, and I hope you're listening today. So just knowing what to bring in and what type of content and how your messaging is portrayed. So moving on to number four, legal. Ugh, what is your best advice there? Sure, it is. I will say this. It is way, it doesn't have to be as complicated as we make it out to be. And it doesn't have to be as complicated as some people will tell you it is. So I'll give you the basics in these different areas. Insurance, unless you have a high liability product or service, you don't need business insurance, meaning uh, if you teach a horseback riding camp, you probably need liability insurance. If you're just making uh, products for your Etsy shop, or even if you're just giving a regular service, like some type of coaching, you don't need any liability. You don't need any, you don't have any liability. You don't need any insurance for that business insurance. Um, patents. Patents can be incredibly expensive. And if you want to do it, that's fine. If you have this really incredibly unique idea, most people don't. Most stuff has been done before. It's not a bad thing, but I just encourage people, skip the cat patent, skip the, the headache and all of the ho hoops you have to jump through and all of the money and time because it can be very expensive and cost and, t and, and take a lot of time as well. And instead, just outwork people. If there's competition out there similar to your product, just outwork them, outserve the customer, and you will come out on top, patent or no patent. Um, and then also, really, the tax questions, I can simplify that for you in one statement. Get a CPA. You need a certified public accountant, regardless of your stage of business. You need someone that is an expert to knowing the tax law so you don't have to, and it protects you and your family. And I promise you, money spent protecting your family is always money well spent. So that can kind of summarize the main categories there. You set us up perfectly for the next one, which is time. And it's that, especially to your demographic, 
they're busy. They're moms. They've got families. They've got full-time jobs, and they're trying to do something on the side. What is your advice for time? So here's what I've found, and this is um, this is something I've been doing kind of research on even recently. Uh, one of the things that we forget about is that time is finite, and we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And so what we as women try to do is just cram more in versus realizing that our time is finite and we're not enjoying anything because we're trying to fit so many things in. We're stressed, we're rushed, we're running ragged, we're bitter, and we're burnt out, and we don't know why. And it's because we're trying to do too much in the same amount of hours every day. And so there are lots of good choices out there. There are lots of good opportunities out there. There are a lot of good things you can do. Um, but you need to choose what is the most important and you need to say yes to those things that are the most important to you. And you may say no to other good things, but it's because your time is finite. And the more that you spend less time doing stuff that is not important or less important, you can make time for those most important priorities. You will find that sense of balance. You will be confident in your time because you're only spending it on what's most important to you. And I will, um, challenge your listeners too. as women, we say yes to a lot of things that are not important to us because we feel guilty, we feel obligated. So we spend all of our time over here in one area when what we actually care about is over here in another area, and then we're resentful. And it's because there's a disconnect in our life between what we care about and what our life actually reflects. And so time can really be simplified. Time management can really be simplified in aligning your time, these precious hours of your life, with only what you exactly care about. And if we're honest, we spend a lot of time on Facebook, social media, scrolling through Twitter, checking up on Instagram, watching reality TV, and those are not bad things. But the average American watches 28 to 35 hours a week of TV. And if you're telling me you're so busy, you can't do the things you want to do, and you watch 28 hours of TV, you don't have a time problem. You have a priority problem. One of my favorite tools from that, and I'm actually stealing it from Dan Miller, is a time matrix sheet where you go through and you chart your time and you really view your time as an investment and say where you're investing your time. And you can see when you have 20 hours watching the Kardashians on there and understanding where it is and where you're putting investment. And as a huge Dave Ramsey fan, I know one of his favorite sayings is no and how empowering it is to say no. So especially here at Business Boutique, I'm curious, you've put so much work into this and this is going to be a movement and it's women are being more empowered in business. What is your future goal for all this work? What is your goal for women in business? So I would love to see this in the future, five or 10 years from now, that it becomes so big that there are hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people that are plugged in and being helped and their life changed by the business boutique. And they don't even know who I am because it has outgrown me that much. That is my dream for this, that it it scales well beyond me. And women are able to find not only the resources that they need and the community that they need, which we've had here this weekend, but they also are able to find the coaching and the continuing education that they need. So right now we're at a stage where we only have this event and we'll do future events, but other than appearing here this weekend. There are thousands of women that wanted to be here and couldn't travel or didn't buy the ticket or didn't get in in time. Um, We've got to have a way to reach those women in their homes, in their cars, in their computers, uh, in a way that's accessible to them, that gives that sense of community and coaching and continuing education beyond just the event. We'll have a book in the future as well, but we need that continual connection so that they stay plugged in and motivated and inspired and equipped to make money doing what they love. This idea of community, and this is something that we brought up with Stephanie Burns as well. Why is community so important, especially for women entrepreneurs? Well, we are all as humans wired for community. That's how we're wired. But women specifically, God created us as very relational uh, individuals. And so when you start to bring women together, there is this power that is created. There's this energy that's created that not only are you able to uh, suppress and fight and wrestle fears, the fear, uh, John Acuff says, fear fears community. And I love that quote because when you start coming together, fear, there's no room for fear when you've got the power of women coming together. But then you also have the other side of that. You're fighting fear on one side just by being in the same room together. But then there's also this unbelievable power and potential and energy that's created. Our team this entire weekend has talked about the energy in that room. And we provided a place and a platform for that to occur, but we could not uh, we could not generate that. All that ha- that was 
generated just by women coming together. And so when you realize there's some real uh, beneficial effects of women just coming together in this and not coming together to compete or tear down, but coming together to champion each other for the purpose of championing one another, um, they leave not only having invested in someone else, but they leave being lifted themselves as well. And so you can't really put a dollar ROI on it, but it's incredible when you watch it in action, when you know, oh, we're in the middle of something big and that's what's going on this week and that's just been incredible. Having been at this event, I can be a testimony to everything that you just said because it is. It's real, it's raw, and it's powerful. And with that, I would love to shift gears a little because you just wrapped up that vision so well. And I'm curious, in 2009, you switched from these entrepreneurial pursuits to the Dave Ramsey team. What spurred that decision? So 2009, it was interesting because I was actually working nonprofit for a full-time job and nonprofit is like ministry or like having a small business and it can burn you out. Um, and I just really, after three years of nonprofit and working 70, 80, 90 hours a week, which I'll talk about later, um, really, I just got burned out and I felt, felt God calling me to go do something else. And I really, I had this thought and I thought to myself, uh, I'm never going to find a company I believe in as much as the YMCA. I love what we do at the YMCA. I love the that we change lives. And I was standing on my deck one day, and I literally felt God say to me, you're going to work for Dave Ramsey. And I thought, well, that is great. Who is Dave Ramsey? And I literally had to go Google him because I had no idea who he was. I thought he was this old guy that my mom listened to on the radio. Had no idea where he lived, where his office was. I Googled him, and apparently he was in Nashville. I was like, well, that's great. I don't have to move. And then I called my best friend Jenny at work, and she picked up, and she was she said whatever the work thing is, like, welcome to, you know, Visitors Bureau. And I said, Jenny, I know who I'm going to work for. And she said, who? I said, Dave Ramsey. She said, I knew you were going to say that. And I've ne we've never mentioned the name Dave Ramsey in our 12-year friendship ever. So it's just crazy. God had a place for me there. And I started out doing product development. Uh, and then God just opened one door after another after another to this speaking career that it is today, uh, which is a very another story for another day. But crazy journey that it's been on. I will say that Cheryl Sandberg, Cheryl Sandberg says in her book, Lean In, that some of the greatest career advancements are not positions that are posted, but it's just simply when you solve a problem and then that problem that you solve, that thing becomes your job. And that's been true for me. That's exactly how I got to where I am today. One of the things that compelled you to the Dave Ramsey company was this idea of changing lives. And what I think is so unique and so powerful about your role is that you're championing a movement and you're really spearheading change and you're doing it within an organization. So to those women out there and to women, men, to just to our listener out there who is in an organization and they want to create that positive impact, what do you have to say to them? I would just say, honestly, being true to yourself is probably the most powerful thing you can do. Like if you can figure out what you're really good at, what your strengths are, the things that make you unique, and you step into that, um, not only are you unstoppable, but you're able to help more people than you ever thought possible because you are in this sweet spot where your strengths are intersecting with the market's needs, are intersecting with what the company you're working for needs, and all these things are coming together in this, your, your deepest passion, all these things are intersecting, and it becomes your sweet spot that is just unstoppable. Uh, Ken Monday, who works for our company, he's been with our company a long time. He came up to me uh, just, just today after my talk on fear. And Ken and I have, have never really even had a conversation, I don't think. He's an unbelievably kind person. He's a great team member. He does such a great job, but we've just never crossed paths in 525 people. And he came up to me, he goes, you're in your spot. He's like, I just want, I know, I'm sure you know this. He goes, but you're in your spot. He goes, I can see by watching you that there is, there is a power around you because you're doing what God called you to do. And I think when, when you step into your strengths, which I'm in my strength zone right now, which is also intersecting a need in the marketplace, helping women, which is intersecting a company need, which is helping uh, people in other areas of, of life besides money so we can scale and grow, then there's a power to that that's unstoppable. So figuring out what that is for you and then stepping into that. There really is a power around you, especially, <laughs> especially sitting in the room with you. I mean, there's this electric charge. Thank you. Before jumping into the rapid fire, a quick resource and tool for you as you grow your business. One of the most challenging things out there can be around branding and marketing and really telling your story in a way that resonates with customers. To help, we've built a comprehensive ideal customer worksheet to help you walk through all the different steps in identifying your customer. Download your free copy at 
positiveimpactpodcast.com slash branding. Hang out with us there and you're also going to find information about a brand new branding guide for young businesses, all giving you the tools to make that positive impact in your business. And now for that rapid fire. Life is a balance of work, passion, and adventure. Can you tell us about a recent adventure or excursion that you've gone on? Well, I just talked about it today. I don't know if I can share it here, but if that's okay. Please do. Uh, A year and a half, my husband surprised me for our two-year wedding anniversary. We'd gone to Hawaii and decided not to do gifts, uh, but he surprised me anyway, which I was very excited he did because I love surprises, uh, with the fact that we were going to go cage diving with sharks. And I've got to tell you, this has been a dream of mine my entire life. I've been all big talk. And then when it came down to it, I was scared out of my mind. But I can tell you, when I got in that cage with these, like, 20 Galapagos sharks swimming around us that are like 15 feet long. It was one of the most exhilarating, amazing experiences of my life. And I would do it a hundred more times. It was that awesome. But I was terrified at first. (laughs) I don't know what it is about this show, but you were the second person out of maybe eight or nine episodes to say that that excursion was cave diving. (laughs) Oh, seriously? (laughs) With sharks. Oh, that's so funny. That's random. Apparently I'm being called to go with (laughs) great white sharks. I I don't think I'm going to answer that call. (laughs) Many social entrepreneurs find solace and tranquility in the outdoors. How have you found this to be beneficial in your life? So I'm an outdoors person anyway, and I'll tell a funny story later about how this is, uh, I'm not a good person when I'm not able to be outdoors. So I try to be outdoors often. Um, but I will say there was something really cool that I'll, I don't know why this story came to mind, so I'll share it. Um, I was running, uh, this was a few years ago, and I was going for a run. I love to run, and the fall leaves were beautiful all around me. And um, I just was kind of praying in my head, and I just thought, Lord, your creation is so beautiful. And I just felt God saying to me, and you are my creation. And I just thought how beautiful that is that, that I could be observing and appreciating the outdoors when God is appreciate, getting to enjoy his creation, me, uh, enjoying his creation, the outdoors. And I just, I think that we are, uh, you know, even if you're not a real adventurer and you don't like bugs and you don't like being hot or sticky or bug spray or whatever, um, I just think there's something outdoors, there's something in connecting with God out there for all of us, even if that's not the primary way in which you uh, connect there and find, you know, tranquility out there, but I definitely am. So it's November right now, and I'm in Nashville, and I currently live in San Diego. So the (laughs) the ability to experience your fall and to have Mm. those colors, it has been gorgeous. I just had to say that. (laughs) So when you head out on these outdoor adventures, what is one must-bring item that you take on excursions? My dog. What I, kind of dog? I have a Bernese Mountain Dog, and he's amazing. Oh, my gosh. And I bring him everywhere that I possibly can. He's more of a companion dog. He's not really like a pet. Like, he is a p- part of my family. And so I bring him anywhere I can. So I think we're going to be asking for a photo for you to share in the show Oh, by notes. all means. By all means. <laughs> I will. Sh- I have pictures of him ever. Him and my nine-month-old son dominate my phone, <laughs> my memory. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So with the work that you do, can you describe a time where you're able to have boots on the ground and really see the power of your work and see that transformation happen? Honestly, it's this weekend. And it's what's incredible is, like I said, we we had, did a lot of homework and research, but then you never know how it's going to turn out until you do it. Um, and the thing, the thing is that I would encourage your listeners is that um, – Winning with projects, a lot of projects um, or businesses, is kind of like telling a joke. If you're going to tell a joke and it's going to work, you've got to go for it, right? Like you can't halfway put it out there or it won't work. Like you've got to commit. And so, for example, Shake It Off. We all dance to Shake It Off, right? Like it would have never worked if I halfway timidly were like, I think maybe we're going to dance. What do you think? Like I had to commit and go for it. And so I just think remembering that in business, like put yourself out there and go for it. Because if it's going to fly, like you've got to really commit uh, for that to play out in your business as well. Like you've got to give it all you got. I cannot believe how well you committed to that. <laughs> oh, I did. I in committed. heels. <laughs> in heels, which... As a woman who struggles in heels, I feel it should be mentioned because I was just in awe. You were up there dancing, shaking. There may have been a video recorded that may or may not make it on the show notes. <laughs> well, I want you to know I picked very specific heels. Like there are some heels that would be I can barely walk in. And then these, I feel like I could run a 5K in them if I needed to. They're good. They're good heels. <laughs> uh, I need to get myself a pair of <laughs> As entrepreneurs, so many of those before us in the past really – have a testimony to the failures and how those failures define their path. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, what is your favorite failure? 
Oh, is there a favorite? Is there is there any favorite that you call a favorite? Or a mistake. Oh, Let's call it no, your favorite No, there's mistake. a favorite. I'll tell you my favorite and the fact that I hate it the most of all. Um, so there was a time, this was several years ago, that was a speaking event that I went to um, a very popular business school uh, several hours away, and I drove a rental car up there. The, the the conference call leading up to the event was was great. I felt good about it. I was going to be speaking to a group of MBA students. Um, now, these students were all primarily male, and at that time, I hadn't spoken to many men. I mostly spoke at, like, high schools. And so I was a little intimidated there, but I was like, it's fine. They were going to be graduating soon. They were going to get huge signing bonuses and be making even huger salaries, uh, much more than I made. So I felt like talking to money about them, I felt real out of my league. Um, but I was like, you know what? These principles are proven. I was teaching, you know, what we teach at Dave Ramsey. Like, this is proven regardless of who you are. And so I got up there, and I was doing a really good job until one of the men in the audience uh, just interrupted me from the audience. And he said, why would I want to pay cash for a car when I could take that money and I could invest it and earn a higher rate of return? And I stood there, and what happened next was every speaker's worst nightmare. I completely froze. And it wasn't that I didn't know the answer, but I was so caught off guard of being kind of attacked and interrupted in the middle of my presentation that I froze. And then I stuttered, and then I froze, and then I stuttered some more, and then I think I said something like, well, you know, I mean, you really need to pay off your debt quickly. And I was, the, the thoughts were, it was just a cloud. I couldn't even think about what I was going to say. And event, he just kept on asking questions and interrogating me. And at one point he said, do you even understand the time value of money? Now, by this point, I have lost all confidence in myself. Um, I think I eventually said, you know, you, you can, you can do that if you want to. Uh, I tried to regain my composure and finish the converse, you know, finish the presentation, but it was, there was no point. I had lost the audience. The, the, la the whisper was so loud. I couldn't hear myself think. Um, and I wanted nothing more than to disappear in that moment. And so I left there and then I cried the entire drive back to Nashville and thought to myself, I never want to speak again. Um, but what a shame it would have been if I let that happen. Um, since God had just called me to speak. And so while that was a failure that still to this day, like makes my chest tight when I think about it, it's also a failure that that to me was almost kind of one of those worst case scenarios. It's like, I've survived that, like come bring it on. What can you do now? You know what I mean? Like I danced to shake it off and nobody danced fine. Great. It's like I'm game on because I've, I've survived that failure. So I guess in a way, I guess it could be a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing that because especially seeing you up there and where you are today. And that John A. Cuff quote that you did earlier today of don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. Mm -hmm. It's so essential for our listeners to hear your beginnings and to hear those humble stories mm -hmm. and to remind themselves that it's rocky when you start. It is. And it's not pretty. Right. <laughs> My next question is, what book do you most recommend to individuals, especially socially minded, who want to make an impact in their current role? Hmm. Who want to make an impact? I think it depends on their business and what you mean by impact. Like I think, you know, if someone wants to go in nonprofit and ministry, that would be probably a different book than I would recommend for uh, someone going into, you know, just getting a startup. One of the, you know, Dave wrote Entree Leadership, which is a great small business book. Start With Why is an excellent book on just how to, uh, kind of speak the language of your market and talk about what you believe to bring people in. Seth Godin wrote Tribes, which if you want to market in any way, you've got to understand the power of having a tribe. So I think that one can be really powerful. Um, Donald Miller has, uh, this is a, I don't think he has a book on this. I think it's just a conference, but I would recommend this, uh, the Storyline Conference. And he talks about story arcs and how uh, if you want to make an impact in terms of influence, you've got to make your customer or your reader or your listener the hero in the scenario. And so that's a way to be able to do that is where, you know, you start to understand story arcs and set your customer up as a hero. So Donald Miller has some great resources and blogs. He writes blogs on them as well. That would really help. Those are all fantastic. So for our recent graduates out there who want to have, who basically want to chart professional lives that have meaning, what advice do you have for them? I think that, you know, there's this belief in our culture that you have to work in nonprofit or ministry to make a difference. And I just want to say that that's a lie because the meaning of your work is the meaning you bring to the work. And if you do your work as unto the Lord, then that ma that matters. That's work that matters. You can be um, you can be a ministry and be a jerk and do damage to the kingdom of God. Or you could be a janitor and love someone well and change their day. And they could meet the Lord because you were the best janitor there ever was. So I think the meaning 
meaning of the work you do has to do with who you are, not the work you're doing. Is there a mantra or a motto that guides your work through the Dave Ramsey team with the Business Forward movement? Um, you know, one of the things, I'll just say what first came to mind, what I always go back to is, um, which I think someone actually quoted this today, is people will forget what you say and they may forget what you do, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And I will say that in everything I do, whether that's a blog or a podcast or a uh, speaking engagement or even just hanging out. Um, if I interact with someone at the grocery store, my goal is to make that person feel amazing, that they would feel like they are somebody, that they would feel like that they matter and that, you know, they're, they're worthy. And if I can do that through any different means, that's what I want to do. That is one of my favorite quotes. I believe that's actually a Maya Angelou quote. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Oh, that is a killer one. Beautiful. To our listeners out there that want to make a positive impact in the world, what advice do you have for them? I would say don't get caught up in doing the perfect thing. Just do something. You know, so often we wait for the perfect calling, the perfect mission. Like, I've got to wait till God's going to drop down from the sky and tell me what I was put on this earth to do. Just start doing something. Like, start moving and shaking. Go go stir something up in go the world. Go shake it up. Yeah, go shake it off, shake it up, whatever you want to do. But it's like in the stirring up of things... There's friction, there's movement, there's opportunity, there's activity. And in that is where you start to sort through and, and define and finalize and figure out what, what you want to do. And your seasons of life may change. Your calling or purpose may not be a lifelong calling or purpose. It may change over time and evolve. Um, but just start doing something. Don't wait for God to come down from the sky and tell you what to do. Just get to work. Go help people. Go use your strengths and help people and love people well. And you'll figure it out as you go what you're supposed to do. Christy, you are both inspiring, compelling, and then let's even throw empowering in there as <laughs> well. How do people learn more about you and how do they get connected? Well, I'm so excited. Just this week, we re, uh, relaunched my website, ChristyWright.com. And so it's C-H-R-I-S-T-Y-W-R-I-G-H-T. Uh, we relaunched it because we had a awesome team that totally redesigned it. So that would be the best space. I've got all my social on there. Um, and then uh, you can also read blogs and connect with tools and resources around life and leadership encouragement. And I happen to know that you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, yep. you're on yep. everything. Yep. We'll have all those handles in the show notes. Christy, thank you so much for taking time out of Business Boutique to come and sit down with us. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I am incredibly fired up by this session with Christy Wright today. Every single level, she just blew it out of the water, even down to the point of cage diving with sharks. Can you even imagine? Oh my gosh, absolutely phenomenal time. If you're looking for all of those different links and resources that we mentioned, head on over to the show notes page at positiveimpactpodcast.com slash Christy Wright. Christy was chock full of different books and other resources to help you thrive in your business from entree leadership to start with why to tribes, all phenomenal reads. Check out other great reads at positiveimpactpodcast.com slash goodreads. Hang out with us there and we're going to hook you up with a free audio download. Thanks to audible until next time. Keep doing your part to make the world a better place.